Hello, my name is Jared Krebs. I'm pictured here with my wife, Crystal, and our dog, Tasia. We're Emerald Directors, co-founders of Team DSI. And on tonight's training, we have a very special guest, Executive Ruby Director, Kate Northrup Watts. I met Kate at our gold retreat in 2007, and we were both brand new gold directors at the time. And it was just so cool because we spent that weekend getting to know all the new gold directors. And I really got to bond with Kate. I got to talk with Kate. Her mother is Christiane Northrup, Dr. Christiane Northrup, who's a world renowned doctor who's been on Oprah, who's respected around the world. But what I love so much about Kate is that she was able to build her business basically independently uh, and, and, and do it like it's, it wasn't just all because her mom's Dr. Northrup. It's like she really built her business and she's in a position now where she just had a new baby. She's recently married and her business is a six figure business that is amazing, amazing asset in her life. And she helps people all over the United States. She's lo located in Maine and she is on our webinar right now and she's going to tell you her story. And I want to bring her on the line. Dad, could you please unmute Kate? Hi. Hi, Kate. How are you? I'm great, thanks. How are you? Yes, doing awesome. Well, thank you so much for being on our webinar tonight. We are all very excited to learn from you. Oh, it is my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Yes, of course. And where are you located in, in Maine? I'm in Falmouth, Maine, which is just a little north of Portland. A little north of Portland. Okay, Portland, Maine. Portland, Maine. Yes. Yeah. And yeah, uh, I know town. it's it's late over there. So thank you for, for making some time for us and, and being on our webinar tonight. I know you usually probably have to wake up early for your baby. So we really appreciate that. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Awesome. So, just, so I just wanted to start off by basically saying the floor is yours. We want to hear okay. your story kind of from, from beginning to, to current and you know, what's been going on and we, we will have some questions for you afterwards, but you know, um, we we are we are all ears. We want to learn from you and hear uh, hear how we can get better and, and hear some of your maybe challenges you've gone through. Hear um, some some of the, the triumphs, some of the strategies, whatever you feel like is important. And uh, and, to, and the floor is yours. All right, great. Well, thanks for thanks again for the intro, Jared. And um, it's such a pleasure to reconnect with you again after um, knowing you since 2007 when we both became gold directors at the same time. So it's been yes. a long journey since then and um, an, an exciting one. So I started my USANA business when I was 18 years old. So it's been a while. Um, and I got introduced to it. I'd actually been taking the product since I was 12. Um, when my aunt and uncle Penny and Phil Kirk, their one star diamond directors, they found the USANA products through a friend of theirs. Um, they were really looking for a good supplement and had found the products and then ended up doing the business because at the time they were looking for an alternative to, um, to create financial well-being because they were running a lodge and that was like a 24-7 business. But they found the products. They were really impressed by the science uh, behind them. Um, they had been both competitive and my aunt Penny was on the U S um, ski team and my uncle Phil was also a competitive athlete. So they had known a lot about the nutritional industry. And when they found the USANA products, they were so impressed by the science and the research that they um, introduced them to my mom. And as a holistic women's health expert, she was always open to hearing about cutting edge science when it came to supplementation, because she'd always been a huge believer in that. And so she ended up um, talking to Dr. John McDonald, who's one of the chief scientists at USANA, and um, they had a great connection and just she believed in the products right away. And we started using them as a family. And she started using them in her medical practice and saw wonderful results with her patients. And, you know, she's been using them ever since. And that was in I think that was in 1994 or 1995. So it's been been a long, long tradition. With we have 26 members of my family who are um, who work with Usana. So it's a long, it's a long-standing Northrop family tradition. Um, and then my own journey to the business came when uh, my parents went through a divorce when I was 16 years old, and I 
saw how much financial upheaval came with that. Um, there was just a lot of, you know, as in any divorce, it was, it was dramatic and it was, it was difficult, um, for all involved. And particularly for my mom at the time she was, um, she was 50. She had a New York times bestselling book, um, women's bodies, women's wisdom. She'd been on the Oprah Winfrey show several times. She had a very successful medical practice. I mean, on the outside, everything looked really good from a success standpoint, but behind the scenes, when she went through the divorce, she realized she knew nothing about money. And that was problematic because for the first time ever in her adult life, she was on her own financially. And during that time, she started reading books by Robert Kiyosaki and because she knew she needed to get on the fast track to financial literacy. And again, I was 16 years old and I, I don't know why, but I had this insatiable appetite for books on personal finance. I, she, was, she was getting into this world and I started reading these books right alongside her. And, you know, we went to Robert Kiyosaki, um, a Robert Kiyosaki workshop. We went to, we attended a workshop with um, Randy Gage and we just started learning about finance. And as a result, in Robert Kiyosaki's book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, you know, he says, if you want to learn about business, um, you should spend five years with a good network marketing company. And we, you know, we knew a great network marketing company because we'd been using their products for several years. And so this idea really came to pass. And what was funny is at the time, again, I was 18 and my mom said, um, you should do, you should build a use on a business. It would be, you know, it would be a great way for you to learn about money while you're in college and, um, and build something on the side. And so I said, great, I'll do that. And you know, the great thing about being 18 is it's like, you don't really know anything anyway. <laughs> so I just, I just did what Penny and Phil told me. And, and, um, and it was great. I made, you know, I made my names list of 200 people. I called everybody I knew. Um, and I did my first summer in the business. I did a weekly health and freedom presentation with a slide projector because there was no such thing as PowerPoint then. So with a slide projector in my mom's living room, every single week. And I invited pretty much all of my parents' friends and all of my friends' parents. So I really, you know, cause I was 18, I was not primarily working within my own market and I started getting customers and I signed up my first few associates and I gave the worst presentations ever. You know, I basically giggled through the entire thing, but I got the message out and it took a while, but it, worked. And when I entered college, I was already making weekly USANA checks, which was very cool. Um, so I, I continued to grow my business during my summer vacations and during my winter vacations. I didn't do a lot of building. You know, sometimes people hear my story and ask me how to build with college students. Um, and I just will say like, that was not how I built my business. It doesn't mean you can't. I just didn't. I, my primary market was not college students. So, um, just, you know, just so you know, I built again with my friends, parents and my parents, friends. And then also I built through meeting people in the community. Um, whether it was, you know, one of my top associates now is Michaela folks, and she was a, my massage therapist in college and, or, or just different people I would meet throughout the community through networking. So that's how I grew my business at first. And then I moved to New York City um, and things, you know, things changed as a result of that, of course, because it's, I was living on my own really for the first time. Um, I ended up sort of in a, a, in a situation where my mom and I went into a business partnership and I tell the story of this in my book, money, a love story. So I'm not going to get into the whole ins and outs of it um, now, but we ended up in a partnership after the gold retreat where I met you, Jared. And then, and then uh, a couple years later realized that really wasn't working. So I went back to building my own business. So it was sort of like a very windy path. And, and for me um, it was a huge lesson around 
believing in myself. So that's been an ongoing lesson for me. And, and I would imagine for those listening, this is an ongoing lesson as well, which is, is kind of coming to that moment of, you know, cause it's so easy to look out at the other people in USANA or just the other people on social media even and say, well, that's easy for her to say she's so, you know, um, strong or he's so, he was so successful in that other business or, wow, she's so articulate or X, Y, Z, right? It's really easy to give all the reasons why somebody else could do this and you can't. And the journey, as we know, with the four pillars of belief, there's belief in the company, belief in the products, belief in the industry, and then belief in yourself. And the key one of those, they're all important, but I think belief in yourself will make or break you the most with all of those four pillars of belief. And and for myself, I realized I had put myself in a position where I felt like because of my mom being who she was, this New York Times bestselling author and um, this, you know, revolutionary in the women's health field, I had sort of painted this story or was telling myself a story that I didn't have, I would never have really what it took to do this business or really anything on my own. So I better, you know, kind of hitch my wagon to hers and, and she would, and, and sort of like, I would never have to step out on my own and feel how scary that can be. And, and then I wouldn't ever have to really basically get uncomfortable and show myself what I was made of. And so that was, that was a several year journey of, of being in that relationship and really realizing that it wasn't working for her and it wasn't working for me. And coming out of that was when I really realized, and it was about a year after I came out of that um, business partnership that I ended up going Ruby. And then um, around that same time I met, well, a little bit before then I met my husband, well, my now husband, Mike, we met through USANA, um, which is kind of like a fun USANA love story (laughs) and uh, ended up traveling the country together and taking this 10 month road trip and going on all kinds of adventures. But over the course of that time, about in our second year of being together, um, we went Ruby together and, and has, it's been pretty solid ever since. So executive Ruby. And then um, I got married in 2014 and we had a baby last September in 2015. So she's 14 months old. And I have to tell you, like having a child and understanding what it takes now to be a mother and how much dedication it takes and and how little control I have now over my time. I, I've never been more grateful for my use on a business. Um, and those early months with Penelope were just really amazing, but also really hard. Um, I had an unexpected kind of bumpy birth experience and, and then just, it was like a hard couple of months. And I, I never really understood, you know, about the beauty and the power of residual income until I was in a situation where I wasn't able to work because I've never been in that situation before. I've always been healthy and able-bodied and, you know, and young and either single or newly married and just totally control in control of my life and my time. But it wasn't until I was in a situation where I was not in control of my time and in my life that I realized, wow, I am so grateful that I put in the time when I was able to with my USANA business so that Mike and I can really be home with our baby girl. And now, you know, now we're working more because she's older and, but for the first nine months of her life, we were, I only had about 10 hours of childcare a week and we were able to really be home with her, both of us. And it was really beautiful. And so, um, so that's been, you know, that's been a huge gift of, of our USANA business. And, and ever since, let's see in 2000, I'm telling my story in like a very (laughs) nonlinear way. I hope that's okay, Jared. (laughs) But, um, but in 2010, I started a blog at katenorthrop.com just on a whim because I needed a source of creative expression and creative fulfillment. And so that ended up becoming a business in and of itself. And that's how I ended up writing my book and, and creating some online courses and getting into the online marketing 
online business world. And what's been really cool is being able to combine and, um, and marry my USANA business with the online brand and being able to incorporate those two things and reach a much wider audience than I might be able to in my small town of Maine because of the power of the internet and because of um, the ability to connect with anyone all over the world. And, and now we have a really successful team growing in the Netherlands, for example, because they found, you know, one of the, our team leader over there found me through katenorthup.com. And I'm, I love the international aspect and, and the fact that even though, um, you know, I have a book and I've been on the Today Show and I, I really know the inner workings of creating a brand, um, having watched my mom do it and now doing it myself. And all of that is really fun and it's exciting and I'll continue to do it because it's where I, where I find my creative fulfillment. Um, but what I love about the USANA aspect of our business is that it's so real. You know, Jared, when you were doing recognition, you were recognizing a woman who's been in USANA for over 10 years and, and how you've gotten to know one another over that time and how she's become real like family to you. And that is the piece that I love about this business that our team, when, when they are committed and when they, you know, they're in for the long haul, like our team, it becomes our family. And that's why our team, we actually do call it the freedom family. That's our team name is the freedom family because it is the, it is the family that you choose. It's the place where you belong, um, where you feel that sense of belonging and it's the people who are going to lift you up and support you. And I love that aspect that I get, get to go deep with people and really know them on a level that I probably never will with some of the people in our online community where you know, they might take a course or be part of a Facebook group, but it's never going to be that same depth as like having, you know, we have quarterly potlucks right here in our house and for our team. And we have a weekly coffee hour where I get together with our team at a small local coffee shop here in, in my hometown. And, um, you know, and doing things like that creates the infrastructure. I know, I know, Jared, you shared with me earlier that you have a weekly meeting and, that is, I know that you found this to be true, is that like, that's the piece that keeps this business going is being, is having people be able to be part of something bigger than themselves and having that sense of belonging and a place to go that's positive, that's uplifting, that's inspiring, that's supportive, having a place that they feel safe. Um, and having a place that's committed to them being their best selves, because, you know, Tony Robbins says that happiness comes from progress and growth. And so having a community that's committed to that is, you know, it's what it's what keeps people around. Um, as we know, it can take a little while for this business to get going. I don't remember how much money I made in my first year, but um but I know that it was, you know, it wasn't much more than $100 a week, um, which was great. I mean, it was awesome to make that, especially at the age of 18. But it's not like I was, you know, going to be living completely on that. And so it takes a while to get it going. And even now, you know, I've been with USANA for 15, 16 years. And I'm an executive Ruby director. So you might say like, oh, well, that's, you know. It's not exactly like the highest rank, but, but um, my business is solid and it's given me the freedom to spend a really long time planning our wedding, to take a four month honeymoon, to take off, you know, a couple weeks after our wedding, to basically nap through my entire pregnancy because I was so tired and then to take um, a three month full maternity leave, but then also an additional six months where, you know, I had only a very limited amount of childcare and I was still primarily being a mother. And that allows me to go pick up my baby girl at daycare whenever I feel like it and not take her into daycare if I feel like having a day and only work three days a week. So um, so the gifts, you know, the gifts of this business are tremendous and it doesn't mean you have to reach. Now it's not to say to not shoot for, like I definitely 
one of our goals is to is to become diamond directors and at the same time like this business is such a beautiful gift um no matter what rank you achieve and i'm a huge fan of the sustainable longer path as opposed to the like out of the gate um huge success that then cannot be sustained. So our business is incredibly solid. It has been all along the way. Our checks are, you know, growing steadily and solid every single week. Um, So there are weeks when we're working on other aspects of our business and not working as much on our USANA business and the checks remain incredibly steady. Um, And I love that aspect. So when you build your team with the community aspects with regular things that they can plug into. Um, When you tap into that aspect of giving people something bigger than themselves to belong to, then that's what creates that solid auto order volume. And that's what creates the sustainability and the long-term people where you will have more and more people celebrating 10 years or 10 years plus in the business. And um, I mean, that's a huge, huge thing to accomplish, Jared, is having somebody in your team who's been more than 10 years in the business. I want to congratulate you on that because it's like a really big deal. Um, so that's, I mean, there's so much more I could say, but that's, that's kind of my story from, from the beginning. And, you know, this, I have grown up in this business for sure. You know, I started when I was 18 and, uh, my dream was always to create financial freedom by the age of 30 so that I could stay home with my kids one day. And I achieved that dream. It was not a linear path. It was much more winding than I had planned, as things always are. Um, And I had a lot of lessons to learn along the way about self-worth and taking myself seriously and understanding that I'm I'm capable of doing this, even if, you know, um, even if I at first didn't think that I I had what it took. Um, And really that journey of separating my business from my mother and going out on my own has been the hugest gift because if I hadn't done that, I never would have shown myself what I was made of. And for anybody who's in any kind of situation where, you know, they might be in a, in a relationship, in a business partnership or whatever, where they feel um, like they're not playing as big as they could. uh, I just want to give you that extra bit of encouragement to say, um, When you are in a situation where you don't feel like you're playing as big as you could, it also means that's the situation for the other person. And so, so moving and being free from that situation um, always ends up being a blessing for both people. And, and I live 10 minutes down the street from my mom. We're just, you know, we're the best of friends and she's completely obsessed with being a grandmother (laughs) to my daughter, Penelope, and it's great. Um, So, so cleaning up our business end of things ended up really enhancing our personal relationship in a beautiful way. Um, So that story has a very happy ending. So yeah, that's what I wanted to share so far, Jared. Is there anything else you'd like me to dive into in particular? Well, yes, Kate. Wow. Thank you so much. This is such a great story. I've taken how many pages of notes here? I've just took five pages of notes. Wow, and, really? I really oh, felt yeah. like I was just rambling. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. You were not rambling. This is so good. Um, some of the highlights that I got from uh, what you said tonight, uh, 26 members of your family are in your business. That's tremendous. It's That's pretty really cool. cool. Um, I really like the name of your team, the Freedom Family. Like, wow, where'd you get that idea? You know, Mike and I were on a hike um, in Scottsdale, Arizona, while we were on our big road trip in 2011, which we called the Freedom Tour. And we were talking about wanting to create a team identity that was separate from Team Northrop, which is also our team name. So we sort of ended we sort of ended up with two team names. But we, you know, Team Northrop, while I love it, is um, it has our name in it, you know. And and so it's like I don't feel like anybody can take ownership of that because it has a last name that not everyone has. And so we really wanted to create a team identity that anyone felt like they would belong to. Um, and felt like they could succeed in no matter what their, you know, lineage or whatever. And so we came up with the freedom family while we were on this hike and, and then we created it. That's so cool. 
That's great. It's such a great story. And it's a great encouragement, uh, you know, to our teams and te people who are listening on this webinar now who are building their own teams as well. And um, it's cool that you, you know, respected your team you came from, but then also was able to create what you did with Freedom Family. I really like that. Thanks. And also, um, I love the story about the the Health and Freedom Weekly meeting you did with a slide projector. And uh, <laughs> it's just funny that that <clears throat> what worked back then still works today. You know, I know the technology is slightly different, but it is fundamentally mm -hmm. the same thing. That weekly weekly home event that uh, you know you did consistently uh, worked in you know when you were eighteen, and it still works today. And a slide projector is just replaced with a computer going into a projector, and that's about it. Yeah, you know. So that that was really cool. Also, I got some great insight on that you didn't you were a college student but you weren't working with college students or going for college students you were going for the your parents friends or um the friends parents your friends parents <laughs> yep. um or meeting people through networking which that's the, how we all have to build it you know and and that was great um i i uh i totally like forgot to mention your book team you guys go get kate's book money a love story i want to get that book and I remember you were on the Today Show. I totally didn't introduce you right, but that is so cool. That's I'm totally fine. <laughs> well, congratulations on that. And, and thank you for making a dif difference for our, our community. And I love the online branding. Um, you know, some of the other things I wrote down was you said it was a huge lesson on believing in yourself and, and how, you know, you were kind of under your mom's umbrella for the first part of your business and that, that process of, of kind of being your own businesswoman, you know, you had to go through that process for you to really break through in your business. And uh, I can totally relate to that, especially in, in my journey as well. Um, and, you know, the upline that I had and, and what I went through as well, um, that I went through a very similar process. Really? Yeah. And um, that's, that was one of my breakthroughs when I became an independent businessman um, that got to make my own decisions and, and everything that was, that was obviously a key part. And so it was really cool to hear that. Sounds like we almost had the same exact story. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and I love how you're able to be a mother for Penelope and that you're able to, to, to still have those checks while you have little control over your time and what you <laughs> provided for you. Um, that was another thing that I wrote down. And then the online branding stuff I need to learn from. I, I really, uh, you're obviously way ahead in that in that arena, and uh, it's really cool to see that you're doing that, and and that you're a great example for us to uh, to look into that and make that part of our our business strategy. Um, so, Absolutely, yeah, everyone so we, can be part of that. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, and and we want to we want to definitely uh, subscribe to what you're doing and and uh, and learn from you. So. Um, yeah, that was that was basically the, the highlights from my notes. And uh, I know we have a lot of team members with questions. And so I'm going to just do some announcements for some upcoming events we have. And mm -hmm. then if you don't mind, we'll, we'll uh, finish the webinar with maybe five or 10 minutes of questions. Great. All right. Let's see here. Are you there, Luis? All right. Can you guys hear me? Yes, we can hear you. We have Kate live on the line. You have some questions about online branding. Go ahead. Uh, yes. Well, uh, two questions, actually. Um, you were mentioning how you uh, were able to create a community and it helped with auto orders and, and getting it, people together. Um, what suggestions would you have with that? And also uh, with online branding as well, uh, what, what suggestions would you have with someone who you would say is kind of beginning with that? Great. So in terms of creating community, we keep it really simple. Um, I do in my local area every Friday morning from 8.30 to 10 a.m. I do a coffee hour for our local team. Okay. And then we, um, everyone's welcome to invite guests. And it's just social. We hang out. Sometimes we talk about specific business stuff. Um, a lot of the time we don't. But we always end up talking about personal growth, about health, um, swapping stories. And it's, it's fabulous. And we've had... Um, a couple people join the team simply from coming to those coffee hours and then wanting to know mm -hmm. more about what this fabulous group of people is all about. So we do use it for prospecting, but we also use it for community building within the team. And every Friday I walk away from those gatherings feeling so 
nourished and uplifted and so does everyone else. And that's why we keep coming back. So that's one thing. Um, we also do a quarterly um, low glycemic potluck party where we get together at one of our local team members houses. And again, we hang out, we socialize, um, it's for fun and guests are welcome. So it's another way uh, for our team to connect, but also for people to be able to invite guests to say, hey, I know you've been thinking about doing this business, come hang out, get the vibe of the team, you know, feel, feel into whether this is a yes for you or not. And that's been really, really um, fruitful as well. And then we always have at convention, we have a team event um, just before convention, usually the night before. And then at sweet retreat, we also do a team gathering. Um, our team is mostly uh-huh. women. So that's why we do it at sweet retreat, but you can of course <laughs> do it at, at any gathering. Um, so those are the yeah. things that have worked really well for us. And then of course our Facebook group is really um, supportive and active and people are in there, you know, a ton of times a day, just connecting and sharing and celebrating and asking questions. And, and that's been really big for us as well. And then we have a weekly team call training call similar to this that Jared was our guest mm-hmm. on today, which was awesome. And then um, we do a monthly webinar, which is like an opportunity presentation. Um, so those that's kind of our structure for creating community. Um, and then in terms of the online branding aspect, you know, I really recommend what I did is I started, I, I picked the medium that felt good to me in terms of wanting to share content. And for me, that's writing. I'm a writer, so that felt really good to me. But some people are more like my husband, Mike. Um, He's more of a video person. He does a lot of Facebook Lives, for example. Um, He really Uh likes video as a a medium to share content. And and really, like, for us, we share, (laughs) we share what we think. (laughs) I mean, it's, it's really that simple. It's like, I, our, my brand is not specifically about health. Um, it's more about financial empowerment and creating um, financial well-being and abundance. It's more of a business brand. Um, but I know like Elizabeth Ryder, for example, is a great model of someone who has branded herself online with a health brand. Um, so both of those are great models. And and you could do more of a personal growth focus. You know, mine's definitely sort of a financial well-being, personal growth focus. But I really, every week I blog about whatever I feel like blogging about. And um, people read it, and I have a relatively large subscriber list. And then occasionally I mention USANA as a, you know, if you want to work with me, if you want to know more about applying some of the concepts that I talk about in a practical real life business, click here to learn more. And everyone's welcome to head over to, um, you can see how it's all set up if you go to katenorthup.com and then you click on work with me, you can see the Freedom Family. And then if you click on the Freedom Family, it takes you over to the freedomfamily.net and then you can just read the copy there and you're welcome to opt in to the email sequence and just see exactly what I put together. Um, and you know, you're welcome to be inspired by that and and create something similar. Um, so that's what we've done and that works really well for us. That's exciting. And, uh, as far as your Facebook community, uh, do you have people, I guess, um, appointed to, to start conversations or does it kind of, is it self-sustaining as far it's as it self-sustaining. is right now? It's really self-sustaining. You know, we have, um, in our group at this point, you know, it's, we've been at this for a while. So we have 700 members in our team Northrop mm-hmm. uh, Facebook group. And, um, that's not even close to the number of people in the downline, but you know, that's like the active people who want to be who want to be up to stuff. And so, yeah, it's pretty self-sustaining. Like I would say on average, we have at least four to five conversations going every single day. Um, Some days more, some days less. And, and uh, we haven't, you know, we haven't needed to have any sort of moderation for the most part. I mean, I maybe delete a post like twice a year or something. I mean, in general, (laughs) everyone keeps it pretty clean and, and, and respectful, you know, the USANA family is awesome that way. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you. I appreciate your, your advice and your, your input on this. Thanks so much for asking. Kate, um, I noticed that you, your structure, thanks for sharing your structure. You, so your weekly thing is not necessarily a health and freedom presentation. It's a coffee hour. Yeah. That's your most consistent, uh, I guess, face-to-face interaction, correct? 
It is. Yep. It's the weekly coffee hour. Um, that really works for us. I know a lot of people, like I know you do a weekly health and freedom. Um, our team is like, we're so chill. (laughs) We're very, like, it's very like nurturing and it's very hanging, hang out based. Um, so I, I think we probably grow slower as a result of that, but, um, but people stay. And I love right. it. So there's not, we don't, we, when somebody signs up, like they're in and I love that. That's awesome. Okay. I dig that. And, um, the, the low glycemic potluck party, that sounds so cool because, you know, usually people bring like crappy food to a potluck and it's right. like, I don't want to eat that. So, oh my I, God, the meals are incredible. What people bring it's the food is so beautiful and delicious. Wow. And then, uh, and then you do once a month opportunity webinar. And I noticed that you don't do anything at night. Like you have your weekly things in the morning, your conference calls at noon. There's like no evening stuff. That's pretty wild. That's, that's something I haven't heard of. Well, our opportunity call is in the evening. Once a month. That's just once a month. Um, Yeah. Once a month. And here's the deal. I understand that for many people, it would be easier for them to attend if it was an evening thing. However, I am so sleepy at, in the evenings. Like this is a very special situation that I'm up past nine right now. <laughs> and I am not my best in the evenings. And the deal is like, I run my own business and daytime stuff works for me. And I don't want to like, the whole point of this business is to create freedom. So I really believe that how you do it is what you get. And that the ends does not always justify the means. So for me, because I get to design my own business and my own life, I do things during the day because it works for me. I understand that it doesn't work for, for everybody, but when we've, when we've surveyed our team, it actually comes out about 50, 50 people who want daytime versus people who want nighttime. And, um, I know I'm a, I'm a better service during the day. And so we, we keep it that way. Um, and it works for us, but and then we record, you know, we, of course, record our calls so people can listen in later. Um, and I figure if people want to start evening things, then they can step into leadership and do that. I love it. Well, it's just great paradigm shift for me, uh, especially with people <laughs> that that don't uh, do late stuff. You know, that's, that's like, OK, here we have an example of someone who does stuff during the day and is also very successful. So thank you for that. Sure. All right. We have one more. We have time for one more question. Oh, I have my mother, executive goal director, Viola Krebs from Salt Lake City, Utah. All right. I just unmuted you. Hello, Kate. Hi, Viola. Nice to hear you. Yes. I'm so happy that you were able to share your story. Um, I just, I don't really have a question. I just want to, I want you to know that I really have admired your family in the USANA um, I mean, ever since we started, what, 11 years ago, you guys were an, an established family in USANA, and I I already had fallen in love with your mother. So I had already read her books and a huge fan. And then Phil and Penny Kirk, I mean, who, you know, couldn't respect them. I know. And, and then there's Edna. I yeah. mean, like Edna, your mom, she's, or your grandma, yeah. right? Yeah, she's your grandma. She's yeah. nine. She's, 90. she's 91 this year. Oh, she's 91. Oh, yeah. We saw her at Sweet Retreat, and I was like, oh, Edna, I need to have a picture with you because she's so <laughs> awesome. And I just want you to know that, you know, I've watched your journey, and I've seen you, you know, um, be partners with your mom and then kind of branch out on your own and write a book. And now you're married and have a baby. And I just want you to know that you guys really inspire me and have helped me a lot in my own personal journey, just by how positive you all are. Thank you so much for that. That means a lot to me. Yeah. So anyway, I'm, I'm still a huge fan, fan of your mom's. <laughs> I subscribe to all her stuff and she's awesome. I'm a yeah. huge fan too. Yes, yes, yes. But <laughs> if there's, if there's someone else that has a question. I, I really don't have a question, but I just wanted to know that I love your family and you guys are just um, you add so much to the USANA family. Thank you so much. I'll ask a question since we got the line open. This is uh, Randy, Jared's dad. <laughs> the coffee, the weekly coffee hour, 
is that a structured hour or you just get together and, and socialize or? Yeah, it's not structured. We just hang. I mean, sometimes people bring questions like almost always every single week, somebody has a business question or a product question. So we always end up talking about USANA. Um, but mostly we hang and, um, and it's great. And I've occasionally given a health and freedom presentation. If we have a guest who wants to know the comp plan or, you know, the Dr. Went story or whatever. Um, but no, it's pretty unstructured. And that, again, that really works for us. We're so laid back. Um, not, you know, Mike doesn't really, Mike doesn't come my husband to coffee hour. It kind of drives him crazy how unstructured it is, but <laughs> it's like a bunch of ladies drinking tea and having lattes and we love it. Well, that's good. Yeah. Uh, not that it wouldn't work for men. I think it could definitely work for men as well. Do, um, do you reserve, do you reserve like a room or do you just like all show up? So we used to all show up um, and then we got a little big for that. So now <laughs> there actually is a great local coffee shop where we can reserve a private room and oh, it's been cool. working out great. Nice. Oh, nice. Yeah. How, how big's the group? Um, well, at the most, probably we've ever been like maybe 12, um, but on an average week, it's more like six. So oh, okay. That's good. Yeah. We're intrigued by your coffee hour. <laughs> yes. I love that you're intrigued. Start one. Let me know how it goes. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. It's just, you know what the other thing is? It's a great, um, no pressure. Here, here's what I find with at least people. I know we're at the hour, so I'll make it quick, but I find that people at first, sometimes in this business, at least our market, they, it takes a second for them to warm up. Mm -hmm. And if they have a place that they can keep coming every week to connect with their hearts and really connect with the other people and connect with what this business is really about, which is about service, which is about community, which is about belonging and like being part of a future that's different and, you know, having that vision for something better. If they can connect with that for a while, then they feel, then they don't feel alone. And when they do begin to take the action steps to build their business, they feel really safe and more grounded. Um, and they have that deeper belief level. So I've found it works really well for that. All right. Awesome. Thank you. Well, thank you again, Kate, for being on this webinar. We really appreciate you taking the time, staying up late for us and sharing your story. <laughs> I got so much from it. I'm going to take it. I'm going to apply uh, the things that I loved and I can't wait to follow you at katenorthrup.com as well. And it's just been really nice to reconnect with you. You know, really haven't chatted much since the gold retreat. I mean, you see each other at convention for like a minute, but yeah, um, you know, it's really cool to see how much you've grown and, and just hear your journey and, you know, congratulations on your family and your solid business. It's just really cool to watch and see. Thank you. Really a pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. Of course, of course. And so with that, uh, we're going to officially end the webinar. We usually